So Massive, if you don't know already, it's your big friend DJ Choice 1MD, another episode of 2B Caribbean Small Island Accent. So I bring you everything small island oriented because we have a lot of talent, a lot of energy, a lot of awesome people that never get the highlight of the, out of the small Caribbean. And right now I am seated next to one of the men that you really, really want to know about. Originally from the island of St. Kitts, yes. my body man, so my countryman. So I am Sugar sitting City. here with Mr. Nigel Walwyn yes. of, as you can see, Oh We. <laughs> this is Caribbean smooth, yes. is what they call it. So Nigel, yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, as always. Welcome to the To Be Caribbean family. Yes, um, yes, happy to be here, man. Yes, before we um, go too much further, um, mm. give the people a little idea of um, your origins. Okay, yeah, yeah. So St. Kitts, man, um, you know, I, I grew up there. I was actually born in England, but you know, when I was like three, four years old, went back to, uh, to St. Kitts, Nevis. You know, my parents are from Nevis. Yeah. And um, I love Nevis, and uh, but I grew up, you know, in St. Kitts. Went to Boston High, went to boys' school, and uh, <laughs> and uh, well, Victoria Road, right? Yeah, yes, yeah. Across, I across know from Victoria the park. Road very well. Yep. <laughs> and um, so yeah, when I grew up in St. Kitts, I went to high school there, and and then left and came up to the states. Went to college and uh, got into TV. You know, got into television. That was well. My background, I'm uh -huh. an Emmy award-winning TV producer wow. and um, that music executive. Didn't know. You know, yeah, yeah, well, I got <laughs> okay. a couple of Emmys with my name on them. And um, you know, big, yeah. Well, you know, I try, I try, I did my thing in TV, and uh, was at CNN for a bit. I was at ABC stations and stuff. Um, I was a news executive running ABC newsrooms, different parts of the country, and then I uh, went to CNN. And, yeah, I did about three years, you know, went on the world stage, man. That was a nice little, um, you know, adventure. Um, yeah, so at CNN, man, it was a chance for me to, you know, get a taste of the world stage. I was involved in some of the, some really major stories and stuff. So you were, um, you were um, like a producer behind the scenes? Yeah, yeah, not specifically a producer at that time, um, but I was in charge of um, bringing in all the big news stories that happened around the country. Oh, okay. There was a separate division that dealt with the world stuff, but mm -hmm. there would be a guy who would be on the phone next to me who was talking to someone in Beirut, oh, you know, okay. talking to someone in Paris, you ah, know, or yeah. in Afghanistan. It was it was crazy, man. Um, okay. You know, just the, the level of um, involvement that you would have and, and, and the stuff that was happening around you. A guy would be, you know, talking Arabic or something to someone wow. over there, you know, okay. and he's sitting right there next to me, you know. <laughs> And it's like, hey, you want a soda? You know, it was, it, was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool being in, in that environment. I remember one morning I was in, it was like 6 o'clock in the morning, and there was some kind of skirmish uprising going on in, in, in Africa. I don't remember what country it was in Africa. And, you know, we had a live picture up. It might have been in Kenya because um, there was like a hostage situation. People got killed and stuff. And our, our correspondent, you know, was, was there, the camera was live and stuff. And, you know, she was waiting to do her live here. And I was just kind of looking in on it. And um, bullets just started flying. And you wow. can see people in the background running. And, you know, her producer is there next to her, you know. And you remember, you know, I remember her, you know, putting on her... her um, black jacket and wow. and then put and a the helmet, helmet on, put a wow. helmet on. Yeah. And it kinda hit I'm sitting here in Atlanta. Yeah. Right? And you're watching And I'm watching like... my colleagues who yeah. get the same, you know, the paycheck coming from the same place. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. You know, but I'm here in comfy air conditioned <laughs> Atlanta. Bullets flying <laughs> behind them and people and running for their lives. Can do to help them. I can't do anything to help them, but it's kind of like, man, you know, this is this is the job, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, probably easily could have been reversed. I could have been the one out there. Yeah. And, and you they know, they watching and they're watching me, and yeah. you know, anything can go wrong. So, so that that was kind of a moment for me. It's like, you know, this is this is some real real stuff that we that we deal with. So, um, 
after you dealt with that corporate side of America, yeah. basically, yeah. you are you branched out on your own. Yes. And now you are officially. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the what's the proper word for somebody that creates liquor? Um, you know, I, I guess I'm a I'm a brand owner. There's a number of different. Things. So okay. you could say I'm a I'm a brand owner because Uwe is a brand. Um, I'm a supplier. Okay. So in the liquor industry, there you're either a supplier, a distributor, or a retailer. When okay. it's as so well as the, so I'm a supplier. So okay. you know I'm 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 at the top level, and then we sell to the distributors, and then the distributors we sell to, to the retailers. retailers. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then the retailers then we sell to the consumer. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I can't sell my liquor directly to the consumer. Yes. I only could sell it to a distributor. So there's a whole system, basically, that has been created by the government. Some people say the mafia, because uh, oh, no. it kind of has that <laughs> feel to it. I, you know, yeah, it's kind of a, it's a little mafia. So basically, <laughs> in a nutshell, your life story, you came from big London into a small St. Kitts and Nevis yes, yes. and back to the United States yes. and now your owner and proprietor of Uwe Caribbean Smooth yes. Liquor. Premium liqueur that, that's in liquor stores, um, in, in stores around Atlanta. So you can go into you know the big stores like Tower here in Atlanta, World of Beverage, the, the yes. super stores. I think they have some bottles in total, wine and spirits. So people, make sure you go to your local store and ask them to give you Ooh We Caribbean Smooth, all right? It's awesome, you have to try it for yourself. So um, as we said, this is uh, Mr. Nigel uh, here with Caribbean Smooth Ooh We. So uh, my question to you is mm -hmm. this, quite simple right now, let me adjust this a little bit. Yeah. Um, how did you come up with, before we even go with how yeah. did you come up with it, yeah. what made you want to own a liquor, well, a liqueur? You know what, I, I didn't start off wanting to own a liquor, I'd be in the liquor industry. Uh -huh. This was about me going, I went to um, I went to St. Croix, you know, because we, we, we left St. Kitts, like say after high school, and my parents, we moved to the Virgin Islands, so, yeah. so St. Croix is like home now. So I went to St. Croix, visited that, it's about 10 years ago. And I uh, went in the backyard, you know, picked some passion fruit. You know, we got all the fruit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so I picked some passion fruit, man, make me some passion fruit drink. And I, you know, put some rums in it and stuff. And, you know, I was like, man, that's that's different. You know, I was like, I yeah. never tasted anything like that. Drank passion fruit since I was small, but, you know, I never really put anything know. in it. <laughs> and um, so I was like, man, this is, this is something. So... I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna create me like a, a drink for me and my friends and my partners, you know? Yeah, like when, yeah. when, we, when we're doing carnival, you know, we do carnival here every year, you know, between 2011 and 2015, it was like 16. It was, um, you know, Nigel bring this this drink, this punch, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I've been doing, and um, I kind of developed it. And, and I remember in 2012, I took it to St. Kitts. Music uh, festival. Oh Kids. Lord, yes, yes. Oh, that was a special event there. So we're gonna do an episode about St. Kitts Music Festival. Also, keep my keep that in mind. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I you know, my, my cousin uh, Christine had um, she would do the VIP tent at the music fest. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, so she's running around getting her stuff together and stuff. I was like, hey, Christine, I'll you know, I'll make this punch. You know, she was like, well, you know about one punch. <laughs> You know, and I'm like, yeah, man, I got this punch, man, I got this punch, you know. And uh, she was like, okay, fine, you know, here's a container, you know, do your thing. So we, you know, went out. I got, you know, the drinks and got the the, the um, ingredients, you know, the rums. Got the passion fruit. Was like Dominican passion fruit, you know. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So I put I put it all together, you know, and um, and I knew I had my little formula recipe basically at that point. And so I put this punch together, made like three gallons of it. She had like a three big three gallon container thing. And uh, I put it in the corner, she, you know, she had it on a little table there. And uh, nobody touched that. <laughs> Everybody at the bar drinking Johnny Black and, and, and Ginger. And, That's my you know, drink, by the way, Black and Ginger. <laughs> black and Ginger. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, including me. 
and um, you know, talking about the Guinness and the Heineken and stuff Nobody and the Karen. Touching the ooey. Nobody touching the you know, it wasn't even ooey at that time, it was just a punch. Um, and then um, you know, about an hour went by and then a dude goes over. You know, and he he, he goes over, takes um, walks away. You know. Same dude comes back, <laughs> takes another hit, walks away. Same dude comes back, but now he got somebody with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Boop, boop, they take a hit, you know. Next thing three, next thing five, next thing ten. Next thing there's like a line waiting to get this punch. Yeah, Punch yeah. gone in an hour. Wow, Punch wow. done. Yeah. And, um, you know, apparently it was a hit, right? I, mean, I know people liked it and stuff, but I didn't really know what a hit it was. I'm, I'm doing my own thing on the music. Yes, yeah, you know, yeah. So I, I'm paying some attention, but not too much attention. I ain't doing the market research, but I'm aware of what's going on. Yeah, so, so that was kind of like, you know, when, when Sink Kids, you know, my Sink Kids bedrooms, when they pretty much gave it the, the, the green light, they gave it so much love. Yeah, yeah. You know, I knew I had something special. Yeah, so you know, um, Caribbean people are the hardest to satisfy when it comes to alcohol. And once the people have approved of the Uwe, you know you had something good. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. now that you have the brand out and about, mm. I know you have opportunities for people yeah. to have part ownership yeah. in the company. So tell us a little yeah, about that. This, this is huge, man. I can't overemphasize enough what a big deal this is. Um, because for one, in the liquor industry, it, um, it's very exclusive, man. It, it, it's almost like, you know, the NFL ownership, <laughs> very exclusive <laughs> group. Yeah. Um, the liquor industry is like that. And um, it's very expensive to actually start a brand. And you could have the most money in the world, you'll probably go broke if you don't have the relationships, if, um, you know, if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so, so there's a lot of things that really go into um, starting a brand in the liquor industry. Um, I, I was fortunate I was able to have some relationships um, with some key people that, that helped me along. And so, you know, I'm... I'm I'm trying to pay it forward now because some people were able to help me to actually get this on the market in the first place, you know, like three years ago. And now it's an opportunity for us to take it to the next level, right? Yeah. So, you know, Uwe is only available in Georgia and over in the Virgin Islands and, and Bermuda right now. But we want it on every island in the Caribbean, on every continent <laughs> on earth where yeah. liquor is sold. We want Uwe to be in that market. I'm, I'm offering this opportunity for, for, for folks, you know, regular folks, you ain't got to be a millionaire. Regular folks, you have an income. So, to me, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and regular folks. I mean, you know, regular folk, man, you ain't got to be a professional investor. You ain't got to be a millionaire. Um, you basically just got to have an income that's taxable and you're able to invest <laughs> That's and a key we, word right there. Yeah. Taxable, <laughs> taxable income. income. <laughs> okay, just, just putting it out there. Just putting it out there. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, so once you got that, you're able to um, to invest in this. This is a private company. Uh, you weren't able to do that for a number of years. Um, Obama changed the law. Uh, basically allowed it starting in 2016 to allow regular everyday folks to be able to invest in a private company. So this is the opportunity, you know, we're early stage, so it's an opportunity for you to be able to now be a part of the liquor industry, not just on the consumer level, but on the supplier level. You can own a piece of this brand. You can own stock in this company, shares in this company, and um, for a very, very minimal amount, as, as low as 100 bucks. You know, okay. We're what asking was... folks for, to start at 150, so, but you can do it at 100. So what's the link that people will be able to So yeah, so you'll be able to, um, to basically get to all of the inf information that you need and actually make your investment at vfunder dot com slash sip uwe so wefunder.com slash sip uwe and sip uwe is s-i-p-o-u-o-u-i and that'll give you everything that you need to um to make that investment so like i said 150 dollars you could go actually up to five percent of your income 
and um, and invest, you know, up to that up to that limit. It'll let you know what your cap is, and um, you essentially own a piece of the company. And okay. you know, as it grows, now this is a long-term investment. This is not something then you know next month you'd be like, okay, where's my return? Yeah, where's my doesn't millions. work like that. <laughs> um, we are getting your investment in, and along with the investment of you know probably a couple million years, gonna be putting money into it too. But I wanted to give you know our customers, our fans, you know my friends, my relatives, uh, people from St. Kitts, you know, opportunity to invest in this company now. Um, help us succeed, succeed with us, and reap the benefits, you know, down five, down. six, seven, eight, ten years down the road. That's what investing is about. Yeah. Buy low, sell high. Sell high. Yeah. Exactly. So, people, we are speaking with, like I said, a small island gentleman. Okay, Mr. Nigel Walwyn, yes. owner, proprietor, um, inventor. Yes. Of who we Caribbean smooth. All right, so I hope you guys got some good information. Please invest. Yes. Don't say we didn't tell you. Don't say we didn't. <laughs> okay. Don't be that guy five years <laughs> exactly. from now. Five years from now. Don't like, be that Man. guy six, seven years from now. <laughs> okay. You know. When you see me <laughs> driving by in my new Benz, you know why. <laughs> okay, so. I um, definitely want to thank you for yeah, taking man. a little time out to come yeah. and see us. This yeah. is Caribbean Accent on the 2B Caribbean platform. We would like to thank Mr. Nigel Walwyn for coming oh, through. It's a pleasure. Um, we're going to keep all the information up on the screen. So make sure you guys subscribe. All right. Thank you for passing through. This is Choice 1MV, Captain of the Feathers Army team. Right here, to be Caribbean, small island accent. We see you guys next time. Boom.